well-meaning, well-meaning people gave me bad advice, okay? Just pray for him. Just love him. And the Lord will get him, you know? But I should have confronted him. Little black book. You know what time it is. 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 Hey guys, and welcome to Little Black Book. You already know what time it is. Listen, you ain't got the minerals, baby! If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe. For those of you who are returnees, you ain't got the minerals, baby. Are you mad? Are you mad? a gay gay? But I should have confronted him about a lot of things. And I look back and realize that I was told in so many ways that it wasn't my place to be overly expecting things from him. Um, Terry Crews and his wife um, just discussing a little bit about, you know, the infidelity that went and took place within their relationship. And I guess I was the one to kind of say, I mean, if you guys have watched my video about I cheated and it ruined my life. I want to let you know that cheating ruins both people's lives. If both people actually care about each other, then cheating ruins more than one person's life. Um, and what I mean by that is that the person who actually cheated, if they genuinely are trying to make amends with you, it will affect them. It will psychologically deal a blow to them that they didn't realize it would take, that they didn't realize would actually happen. The, the effect of cheating on somebody of harming your own image. The Bible says two shall become one. The two actually become one and you become a mirror. So if I'm hurting you, I'm hurting myself. And a man who loves himself doesn't hurt himself, right? Um, so the vice versa, a man who loves himself wouldn't hurt his wife because that's the image of him. That is a, a carbon copy. The same way Christ sees us as a reflection of himself. He sees himself in us. He's put his spirit into us and therefore he loves us and therefore doesn't try to harm us, you know, um, as Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says. So just kind of pulling up on uh, what was said within the video, I just want to kind of pinpoint thing. I think Rebecca, Rebecca, sorry, the wife of Terry Crews, Rebecca said obviously, you know, she when, the, when this cheating storm actually first came out, she had some advice from some fellow Christians who said obviously pray about it, etc, etc. And quite rightly so, I mean, it is an absolute lie from the pit of hell that somebody should say leave it alone let god deal with it it doesn't work like that we should actually um, as she said confront actually we, what we should be doing is actually bringing this up to the individual and actually saying listen look this is what's happened and this is how i feel about it um, and if we're going to make it work this is what we're going to do if we're not going to make it work let me know the truth of what happened and i'm going to walk away uh, you're at every you i guess obviously i don't say you're at every right to walk away but that's an option that you you have on the table if you want to take it. There's another discussion whether divorce should actually take place, um, but we'll do that in another video. So obviously when Rebecca said that, I think one of the things about church people is that sometimes that we over-spiritualize things and actually over-gloss certain things that God is really trying to tell us. Um, so when it comes to cheating, God is very, very, very clear about how he feels about men, especially cheating on their wives. In fact, the Bible talks about men cheating on the wives in Malachi 2 and talks about it in 1 Peter 3. Um, so it's important to understand that when you're giving advice to somebody who's been cheated on, it's, you don't go spiritual uh, and spiritual alone. That's what I mean. There is a spiritual and a physical aspect that one has to get into. Christ was not in the business of just dealing with the spiritual. He dealt with the physical too. And so I think it's very important for us to understand that Cheating is something that affects us psychologically, emotionally, spiritually. It can even affect us financially. So it, it covers all borders. So we can't have a solution that's only spiritual. Um, you, do you see what I'm saying? And so she was quite rightly to say that she was let... She didn't say it, but I believe... She He's the man. Let him run his life. You know, you, you trust God to deal with your family. And, and that's not bad. But the Bible also says that we're to confront. She was let down by those around her. The Bible talks about having wise counsel around you. It's like, you know, it's, it's you know, we're in a generation now where, I don't want to say generation, since the beginning of, since the beginning of, um, of time with Adam, um, we've seen that men have always passed on, um, have always passed on the blame of behavior onto women. 
And because also there's all the curse in Genesis 3 where the Bible says the woman will pine after the husband, what we see is men who have become rulers and are dominating their wives. You see, when you're in a position of power, you have the ability to abuse that power because you are in a position of power. And that's the unfortunate thing here that we see with men and women, that men are in a position of power and what do they do with that power? Do all men cheat? No. Um, there is a large proportion of men that cheat, but not all men do cheat. I think that's something we want to clarify. As well, I wanted to look at, you know, uh, Bible as well. I wanted to kind of look at that as well, because obviously she read she was a Christian. I love the fact it makes it very, very clear and, and concise. So I'm going to read from verse 13. It says, here is another thing that you do. You cover the Lord's altar with tears, weeping and groaning because he, he pays no attention to the offerings and doesn't accept them with pleasure. You cry out. Why doesn't the Lord accept my worship? I'll tell you why. Because the Lord witnessed the vows you and your wife made when you were young. But you have been unfaithful to her, though she remained your faithful partner, the wife of your marriage vows. Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife in body and in spirit? Do you see what I'm saying about how we should deal with things in physical and in spiritual? In body and spirit, you are his. And what? does he want God and uh, uh, what does he want godly children from your union so guard your heart remain loyal to the wife of your youth for I hate divorce says the Lord the God of Israel to divorce your wife listen to this to divorce your wife why does it say men because of the way that in that in that particular time and context uh, men were the one that had the power really to divorce their wives not that way around so I hate divorce says the Lord, the God of Israel. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty, says the Lord of heaven of armies. So guard your heart and do not be unfaithful to your wife. It mentioned this twice in the scripture, in those three verses. So you can tell already God has a very strong position on divorce, a strong position on cheating and being unfaithful to your wife. It says, you cry out unto me and say, why do you not accept my worship? Well, because you are being unfaithful to your wife. So God is dealing with this issue. In fact, let's not just leave it on the Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament, right? Let's go to the New Testament. Let's, let's deal with that. Yeah, 3 verse 7 says, um, In the same way, you husbands must give honour to your wives. You know how church doesn't often preach the scripture. I know why. <laughs> In the same way, you husbands must give honour to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be the weaker, she may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. Listen to the warning there. Treat her as you should, so your prayers shall not be hindered. So we can clearly see God has a very strong position when it comes to being unfaithful. Talking about whether and you know Jesus Christ even talked about adultery and talked about um, you know committing that. That, that sin there. So we, we know that, listen, God is not in the business of trying to keep a woman in a relationship where she's being abused emotionally, physically, spiritually, sexually. He doesn't want that type of relationship. He doesn't want somebody to be, um, you know, suffering at that particular helm. And what we see with Rebecca is that, you know, she states, we know that she obviously stayed, didn't it? And one of the things that I was finding interesting was a comment section at how quickly and how vast and how many women were so quick to say, can't believe she stayed. Um, you know, rada, 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 and said a whole lot of stuff without actually deepening the situation. Especially as Christians, talking about Christianity as well, it's not an excuse um, as Christians to say, I'm going to stay in a relationship because I'm Christian. But what it is, is an opportunity to showcase God's love. You see, someone disrespecting you stepping out of the relationship, you must understand what marriage is. Marriage is a commitment before God. It is a, holy it's a holy communion between two people becoming one. It is a declaration before God that we will showcase what you have done in heaven for us. You see, God has sent the lamb to be the, to be the, the groom for us, the bride. And the Bible says that he has not forsaken us. And when we came into a relationship with God, he has never forsaken us once we come into marriage. And so what we're seeing here is that in a marriage, um, I know a lot of people would, would want to say about, Jesus Christ gave the exit clause on marriage. He technically didn't. He actually said it's a, another way out of marriage. It's adultery. You, I mean, it's fornication. You 
can't commit fornication when you're married. What he was talking about was um, in the Jewish customs of people getting engaged um, or they were betrothed to somebody. Um, and when somebody had been found to no longer be a virgin cheating, they were then obviously allowed to, to cancel uh, the, the next step of things in terms of actually consummating the marriage. So that's what he was addressing because of the customs. He wasn't addressing marriage now. There is actually no exit clause in marriage. Now some are going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, you see, because marriage is such a commitment that it's about what Christ has done for us and the fact that when he gets a hold of us, he never lets go no matter the sin. Why? Because he's paid it all. And that's why the disciples said, who can have this kind of teaching? It's a very hard teaching. Who will get married? Yes, because he put it in its right, proper pace. Pace, place. That's why Christ said, I came to not abolish the law, but I came to, what, fulfill it. I came to put it at the proper limit of where it needs to be. And that in the course of the marriage, there were things he had done that crossed the line into either physical or spiritual or emotional infidelity. So whether it was just having too cozy of a friendship with somebody or actual an actual physical act. And I said, what else is there? Because where there's one, there's a hundred. So break it down. And he started to admit stuff to me, like going to strip clubs and going to, he went to a prostitute and. Yeah, sometimes when you come out of a situation and you're able to look back on it and you reflect and you think to yourself, how do we get through that? And that's what God can do. Um, and I'm not, I have no doubt that they had to consult God and I have no doubt that there was a painful um, procession of, of things that they had to do to, I guess, um, get to the stage that they're at right now. So it was quite interesting to kind of see that. I guess I was as well. You know, there were some comments I made below as well about the types of cheating and is there a difference? And I think I've been in a video about this on um, a TV series on um, Love and Huntsville, or whatever it was, Love, Marriage and Huntsville. And I said, there are, there are types of cheating that cause damage, yeah? Different types of damage. Um, and I'm gonna be honest with you. Like for instance, in boxing, a knockout is a knockout, but an uppercut is different to a right jab. A right jab is different to a jab, is right, different to a right straight or, or, or left hook. The, the, the force of what each punch can bring to somebody being knocked out or punched in the gut that knocks them out is different. Though the result may be the same of a knockout, the force and the excessiveness, excessive, uh, the excessiveness of that force is different for each particular action, even though the result is the same. So cheating may still be the same. He cheated with prostitutes. He cheated with uh, whoever he cheated with. He, had, he was emotional cheating, spiritually cheating, all that kind of stuff. But the result is the same. He cheated. But what it is, is deeper. So I think there was a, 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 a kind of focus on the fact that he cheated with prostitutes. There is a deeper, there's a deeper line in hurt there when you cheat with a prostitute because it's not, it's not even now another girl who tingled your spice, but it's more of a case of how we view prostitutes. So it's more about the value that we place on prostitutes and how we view them in society rather than actually being the fact that he cheated with something, he cheated, on, he cheated and did something more vital. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, so that's, again, I would like to say this again, I mean, if somebody, if, you're, if your partner cheated with the same sex, how would you take it? It would be different to how they cheated with somebody who's of the different opposite sex. Because you can kind of understand that, but now you're confused as to how your partner cheated with the same sex. What does that actually mean for you? So, again, there are different types of punches and different types of knockouts. The result is the same, but the force of how it hits you, different. So the hurt can also be different. I'll just address some of the, some of the comments that were actually made um, in terms of dealing with it. So, one of the comments I was made was that like, she's weak for staying. And I want to say this, you're neither stronger, neither weaker whether you leave or stay. I, I, you could argue that staying, is take, it takes a different type of strength. What I would say is that I don't want to put any kind of gloss on any particular one. What I do know is that how much energy, how much love, how much patience, how much forgiveness, how much um, you know mental toughness—ity, if that's the word you want to call it—how um, much um, growth it requires um, for you to enter into a process of healing after somebody's cheated. I want to equate this. Someone cheating is like. You know what, in order to go past that point, there needs to be a renewal of you. You need to die and come back to life. What I mean by that is that the old you would be dead. Once somebody cheats on you, the old you dies and you become a completely different person. Because that person has broken the covenant. 
Now to break a covenant, it often involves blood. That's what it is. So you see, and blood is a lifeline of any human being or any being. So in the case of cheating, what happens is a person dies and there's need, in order for them to continue forward in, an, in that same relationship, they need to almost die to self and, and, and become a new person again. The way you think, the way you behave, the way you move, all changes. Why? Because of this particular act. So it doesn't, I, would necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily say someone's stronger for staying or stronger for leaving. I would just say that it takes different strengths to do either or wrong. Um, someone always says, well, if he cheats, if he or she cheats, I'm out. And I would say to you, if you're a Christian, can you have that position? It sounds good, but can you have that position? The reason why I say that is because your relationship is not for you. You see, you, that's the first problem. You thought the relationship was for you. No, your relationship is to bring the glory of God uh, or to show the, show the, the majesty of God um, through your relationship. You're meant to showcase how what God has done for us in your marriage. Therefore, you're forgiving a person with unconditional love. Yes, that's why I said the disciples said, this is a tough teaching that you're talking about, Jesus. And he, and he said, yeah, it is. So you have to deep it that you can't have a position I'm going to leave straight away because you don't know what God is asking you to do. If God has asked you to stay, are you really now going to disobey God? My life is not my own. To you I belong, I give myself, I give myself to you. Well, it's quite obvious as well that some people haven't been in that position as well. You see, if you haven't been in that position, you may be the first one to say, I'm definitely going to leave. I've been on both sides of the pond. I've been on the side where I've been cheated on, not been, and I've also done the cheating. And I realised, you don't just pack up and leave. Pack up and drive, drive, drive. You don't just do it, do you know what I mean? Because... Like I said, when you say you truly love that person, you try to find a way to rectify what you're dealing with. Now, some people may not have that ability to do so, and we're not, that's not a problem either. What I'm saying is that when you love somebody, it runs deep, and it's not a case of just uncutting you off now. And I think people who are sensible of building relationships know this is not the case, and know this is, this is not a 100% clear cut from You don't just cut off somebody because they're cheating. It doesn't always happen like that. It's nice to think that, but it's not like that. Some said obviously she stayed for the wealth. Um, and I don't doubt that that plays, uh, you know, maybe an, an inkling in her thinking. But to say that that's the reason why she stayed is also to be negligent of the fact that people stay when there's no money. So, is that really the case? No. And if he's got money, could she take half? Yes. So, what would be the necessity of her staying because of wealth? That's not why people stay when they've been cheated on. So, let's get that myth out of our head. Um, and again it's, again, it's another brush to kind of tarnish women with. And there was a man who said it, so it's like another brush to kind of tarnish women with. Um, and you see that because those kind of men, they don't deserve women, man. Those kind of men, they always want to tarnish women, just want to talk trash about women just because, like, they, they, they have, um, you know, some, some discrimination, discriminatory um, issues with women. I, I don't listen to them kind of men. But nobody wants to, st I don't think nobody wants to stay for emotional abuse. Because um, that's what I call cheating. And cheating, in a sense, is almost a sense of emotional abuse. It affects a person that much. It's trauma. So I don't think anybody wants to volunteer to be in trauma twice, three times, four times. What I do know is that when there's a general repentance on the, in the, on the individual's behalf, you know, you genuinely want to forgive that person and you want to be able to move forward that person because you love them. Right? That's the whole point. Uh, someone wants to put as well, why is it always women as well? And I'll say this, look, this started from the beginning, Adam and Eve. This started from the beginning. When Adam... Uh, was in the garden um, you know the Bible says when they fell the the sin I mean not sin the, the, the curse that was attached to them was that women will pile up to their husband and the man will rule thee and I want you to understand that so long as that happened men were in a place of power when you're in a place of power because men, man, mankind itself is corruptible hence we hear uh, the Bible talking about the fact that she's a weaker vessel and treat her as such so I think for me obviously you know looking at that why women always? Why is it always women that seem to be forgiving their men? I mean, like I said, because these men have power, they have finances, they have everything like that, and it's just a case of abusing your position. Just like if your boss, your boss at work, whoever abuses their position, it's not. It's not necessarily. I don't want to say it's not necessarily personal, but what I would say is that, you know, it's the same with the white person abusing a black person. They're in a position of power. They've been entitled. 
And when you're in a place of entitlement and you don't understand, hence why men can't take it when they get cheated upon, is because when you're in a place of entitlement, you are in, you feel entitled to your feelings. And so what happens is, just like if a black person turns it on a white person, suddenly the black person, the white person is like, whoa, 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 what do you mean? Like, that shouldn't be running. Why? Because they're not used to that. And so what happens is, they can't take it. And same with men, when it comes to cheating, they can't take it. Not because they're not emotionally um, stronger than a woman or weaker than a woman. Simply because they're in a place of entitlement. They're not used to having the tables turned on them. So when it is turned on them, they throw their, pram, their toys out of a pram because they're spoiled. That's the truth. And also as well, men in this society are not held accountable enough. We do not hold them accountable enough. In society, especially within our media, we portray men to be these Adonises, these gods. These men who can do whatever they want and get any woman they want and treat any woman the way they like. And we back it with the music we play. These B, these B's and these hoes and, you know, I, I do this, I do that. And we don't check them. And we don't check them from the fact that when they were youth, we don't check them. And that's the problem. They start off very, very little. You know, you start off in your house, oh, women are the ones that cook and men don't. That already starts a discontinuity in the terms of gender already. Why is it a boy can't cook? Why can't we teach a boy to learn to cook from the beginning? Why can't we teach a boy how to wash his clothes from the beginning, or use a washing machine from the beginning? But we teach a woman to do those things, and we expect a woman to do those things. Why can't we teach a man from jump to do those things? Again, that's created a disproportionate um, thinking amongst women and amongst men as well. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, we don't hold men enough accountable. And the last kind of thing is, why forgive a cheat? And the question is this, in the Christian household, why do you forgive a cheat? Because you're a bloody cheater yourself. Yeah, when it comes to your relationship with God, you are a cheater. The Bible talks about Israel being an adulteress. That is you. You were the cheater. In fact, your cheating caused Jesus Christ to come and die for you. So you have to understand that we forgive each other, one another, because Christ forgave us. That's why we forgive a cheater. Now, is you know, in certain cases, there are people who are taking that, who are abusing that 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 forgiveness. We're not talking about them. We're talking about normal people. We're talking about Julian now. Until Julian, sorry, we're talking about Terry Crews and his, and his wife Rebecca. And in this case, we're talking about a situation where, you know, um, she's forgiven him. And and the reason why again is because we are a reflection of each other. If we can't forgive each other, how can I get, how can I be asking for forgiveness myself? And that's why we forgive. One another and forgiveness is a beautiful thing it does not forgiveness does not restore what i mean by that is it doesn't necessarily restore you back to the place you were before if i ate your cake i can buy you another cake right but if i if if, if i broke a priceless ornament that was of your family heirloom i can't replace that i could buy you another one but it can't replace the sentiment that comes with it you know what i'm saying so there's understanding of that it doesn't necessarily restore the begin or back to beginning and so I want to just leave it on that and say, listen, when it came to that scenario, I want to say, obviously, there'll be a part two of this. Watch out for part two tomorrow. We're talking about the fact that, you know, cheating is such an erroneous move to make. It's conscious. It's on purpose. You know, it's something that hurts both parties, though, uh, even though it sounds really weird. It does hurt both parties because the person who, who genuinely cares about you knows they've messed up. And so I want to leave it on the scripture, Luke, I think it's Luke 7, where it talks about the woman that washed Jesus' feet with, the, with her tears. Why did she do that? She did that because she knew she was wrong. She was broken. And that's how God sees us. And so when someone's cheating, they are like the woman who's washing Jesus Christ's feet with, the, with her tears. They know they have done wrong to you. And they wish they could take it back. But now they are left with a, a mark forever, just as you are. So cheating is a very deep thing. Um, so yeah, guys. Just like you will never be a virgin again, you will never fully forget that someone's ever cheated on you. So guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe. You already know what time it is, man. Wakanda's kind of forever, baby. Little black book. Little black book. You know what time it is. You know what time it is.